the last format podcast i am your host 4kd ray we are back once again you guys if you got questions that you would love answered questions comments concerns you can hit me up on instagram at the last format podcast or if you have work you think of any questions email me the last format podcast 4k at gmail.com all right you guys so let's get into this conversation about movie reviews believing online movie reviewers and especially youtube movie reviews now last week you guys if you haven't checked out the channel go check it out 4k d ray on youtube i put a video out about the ring 4k i've seen a lot of people saying that the transfer really was not very good especially compared to the shout factory now one of those reasons why it probably wasn't as good the shout factory disc 4k disc was a hundred gigabyte disc while paramount put it put it out on a 66 gigabyte disc so Shout Factory had more room to do a better uh, 4K resolution and, you know, add some extras. Unlike Paramount, who decided not to put any extras, and there was some encode issues. But I'm here to tell you, watching that transfer, I pleasantly enjoyed what I saw. Were there a few minor issues here and there? Sure. Uh, one thing that I noticed, it could have just been my TV, though, is that, you know, i seen a little bit of what I would say is probably digital noise around some of the faces and mouths when they were talking but again maybe that was just me my experience with my tv you may not have that same experience all right so let's get into it man um like i said i've seen a lot of people saying that that transfer was not good it was a lot of back and forth on it especially on blu-ray.com swarm um we had av forums came out with their review i believe before blu-ray.com so one of the things uh, AV Forum said, they said, the encode chokes on embarrassing low bit rates, hands down one of the worst releases this year. Wow. And a lot of people was running with that. I've seen a lot of people, you know, taking a look at photos saying, yeah, this doesn't look too good. This is too green. It, the movie, from what I remember, has more of a blue tint than a green tint. There's definitely some encode issues throughout the movie. Maybe not a lot, but there was at least three that people were pointing out. You know, everybody may not experience that same viewing once again. Then we have Blu-ray.com come out with their review of it. And one of the things they said is the encode is as solid as they come. No compression artifacts or other anomalies present. So they gave it a five star review for picture quality. Um, so we had a whole lot of back and forth going on with that one. Um, like I said, it was totally fine with me. I enjoyed what I watched. I have not seen that movie in years, so I am totally fine with the 4K transfer. You guys, if you watched it, you can always let me know. Go back to the YouTube video and let me know what you thought of it. But I am here to say, man, many times I have posted reviews on my channel. I try not to do it very often because I'm not someone that likes to try to persuade people on what to do with their money. Um, I try to give them my best opinion possible as far as reviews or anything like that but one thing that i always make sure i do is i put on screen a full disclosure that your experience may not be the same as mine if you enjoy this movie you really want to grab it go ahead and grab it judge it for yourself never just base something off of what someone else thinks this is your money do what you want to with it your experience may not be the same as theirs there are many factors that can go into that so let's get into that real quick some of the few things that can, you know, make your viewing experience different than mine or whomever reviews you're watching, your favorite YouTuber, your favorite website. One of the main things, the TV. Not all of us have the same setup. There are so many different 4K TVs with different specifications, whether or not you got a TV, a OLED, a QLED, mini LED, any of those, whether or not your TV is equipped with HDR10+, plus, HDR10, Dolby Vision, so you may have a Samsung, does not have Dolby Vision support. So that goes a long way. You may have a TV that goes 60 hertz. Someone else may have one that goes 120 hertz. Um, next up, the 4K player that you're using. I'm still he hearing a lot of people are using Xbox as their 4K player and not a standalone. Even when it comes to the standalone player, what type of player do you have? Do you have a Samsung? Do you have an LG? Do you have the more higher price Panasonic models. We all know Panasonic is the main, I believe it's the 820, is the one that everybody, you know, gloats about. It's a higher price. Not everybody's willing to pay that price for a 4K player. Next up, your lighting in your room, along with your viewing distance, what that picture quality may turn out like, the size of your TV, how far you're sitting away, 
how much glare may be hitting that TV, the color of your walls, all of that plays a factor. Not as much of a factor as the size of a disc that they're putting it on and what they've done as far as getting that 4K resolution and adding that HDR or Dolby Vision, but it does play a factor. You cannot discredit that being a factor in your viewing experience. Last but not least, I would say your vision. All of our vision's not the same. Not all of us are gonna see judder. Not all of us are gonna see digital noise or lower bit rates. Some people don't even know what it is when they hear, oh, how do I how do I experience, how do I know if something's at a lower bit rate? You know, I'm not doing a side-by-side -side viewing. Oh, and here's another one that I didn't even talk about with the TVs, whether your TV is professionally calibrated or not. Trying to get those colors as most accurate as possible. The settings on your TV that you do, whether or not you like the motion interpolation, um, the soap opera effect, things like that. What settings are turned on on your TV versus what's turned off on someone else's TV. So again, I say this. I'm not trying to discredit anyone here, whether you enjoy certain YouTubers. We all have YouTubers we love to watch. I'm not discrediting anybody here. All I am saying is when you are watching these videos, keep in mind everybody's experience is different. Mine, yours, whomever is reviewing this movie. All of them are different depending on what their setup is like. All, you can use anyone as a baseline but if this is a movie that's releasing that you really enjoy you are willing to pay that price because you enjoy the movie give it a shot you were gonna buy it anyway you may enjoy it there's plenty of titles that have come out on the 4k format that have been up for discussion for years from t2 people saying it's not a good transfer some people saying hey i'm totally fine with it i like the more sharper image um so there's people that like that nonetheless. Platoon, one of the worst transfers I've seen on 4K. You've had Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, just recent, a lot of people was waiting on James Cameron to release his set of 4Ks, True Lies, The Abyss, and Aliens. A lot of people did not like True Lies. I've heard people say, hey, this is the best I've seen it. I love this 4K. Some people hated Aliens. Me personally, I was totally fine with the way Aliens looked. I like the more modern, sharper look, better colors. I enjoyed it. Some people say it was the worst out of the three with the Bisbee being the first. So once again, that just takes you back. Everybody's experience is not the same. So take it at face value what you hear in these reviews. Um, when it goes to the ring, I tried to go back and I tried to find other YouTubers to see who reviewed this movie so far. I only found mid-level media who I think did a pretty decent job um, trying to give you guys information about what he saw, what he thought off of his viewing experience, gave you some of the specifications that he saw on Blu-ray.com for us, what size disc they were using, whether it was native 4K, HDR, Dolby Vision, all of that good stuff. And one thing that he pointed out is he has an OLED. So to him, the tint was more of a green that he didn't quite remember seeing off of his, I believe it was a DVD that he had. So he said the tint came off more green. And what I saw in the um, comments of that video was somebody said, well, since you're, since you're watching the OLED, you know, that's one of the things with the OLED that things seem to be a look, it pushes greens a little bit more. So that may be what you're experiencing here. But for me, after watching it, I would say the tint was also pushing a little more green than blue, but it wasn't a distraction or anything. It did not take me away from the movie. I thought this transfer was, I'd give it to a four to a 4.5 out of five. I don't know if I agree with Blu-ray.com saying it's a solid five because there were, there were moments that I was just like, and this scene doesn't look as good because of maybe grain management or what I said earlier, experienced a little bit of that digital noise around the faces and the mouths. But again, that could be my TV. So I'm gonna leave you guys with that on that topic, you know, Take all of it as face value. If you enjoy these movies, you want it in hand, you want to watch it, you have been waiting, this is one of your favorite movies, take their opinions, take anybody's opinions as face value. Make your own judgment. Give it a watch yourself. Then say, you know what, this person was right or this person was wrong. Well, I like this even though they didn't like it and so forth.
All right, so moving on to the next topic, you guys, we definitely got to get into this one because this week we had Deadpool and Wolverine release. Uh, they had two still books, one with Deadpool, one with Wolverine. Everybody wanted both of them. Um, we've seen the prices ranging from fifty to seventy dollars, depending on where you try to pre-order. And once again, everybody loves to say, "Well, I'm a pre-order because the price is going to come down anyway." Well. Safe to say the prices did not come down on this release. People paid $50 to $70 for these steel books. Some people got them. Some people's got canceled. Some people's are back order, whatever. A lot went on with this one. Some people are very upset and say, you know what? I am not paying that price. I am canceling. There is no way I'm paying $50 plus for this steel book. There's plenty of people that are very happy with it. So I've tried to tell people for a long time that, you know, when they put these pre-order prices up, sometimes it's it's the gauge whether enough people are willing to pay that price. Yes, yeah, so most of the time, I'd say at least about 80% or more that the price goes down, but sometimes it doesn't, and this time it did not. Let's get into it.